among many reasons. I knew one of the reasons I wasn't cut out to be a psychologist was I don't know when a series of behavior becomes a pattern like the Guardians right now. But like a psychologist, we're going to sit here and we're going to talk through this problem because that's all we can do and that's all the Guardians can do. You are Locked On Guardians, your daily podcast on the Cleveland Guardians. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show today. Uh, can I just say out of the gate, can, can I break the mystique and say that Justin and I are friends, like actual friends? So when one of us is out, it doesn't mean bad talk to the other. It just weirdly happens for both of us. It's not a lot, but it's just it's a weird little thing that happens. Um, we're, we're, I think I've told this story before. Just very quickly, when they were like, hey, we found you a co-host. What do you know about this Justin Lotta guy? I'm like, oh, he's my friend. Like this, maybe you should have asked me first before you hired him. But I would have been like, okay, yes, this is a good co-host. Um, then one other sm small bit, bit of housekeeping. People asked me to do a box score bingo from that crazy Yankees game. I was at Great Wolf Lodge with my family. I did not have time. If you would still like me to do a short tomorrow with the box score bingo from that crazy extra inning game, comment here if you would like that i will still do that i apologize i know i said i would but family vacation more important uh but having said that supplyhouse.com is a reliable way to get parts fast shop for your next plumbing hvac or electrical job and get fast shipping from coast to coast at supplyhouse.com today's lockdown guardians a friday edition thank you all for being here and you know if you if you've uh ever been to a therapy session before you just state your name and how long you've been a, a victim of guardians baseball <laughs> Um, we'll talk about the Guardians' offensive struggles, uh, what answers can be found. Talking about, you know, if this is just a – they keep saying it's a stretch of, of bad, just bad. You know, it's a stretch right now. They're just going through it. It's not necessarily a pattern. It's just a stretch. We'll try to figure out which one that is. We'll talk a little bit about that, that ugly Yankees game on Wednesday, but we're going to – or Thursday. But we're going to just try to talk about the picture as a whole right now versus that one game. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the sh other hitters. I want to take a quick look at other hitters that were traded at the deadline. Um, we'll talk about just other roster moves. And we're going to talk about a little bit about other players in the roster, who we've learned about this year. And then we'll wrap up things with, uh, you know, Jose Ramirez continuing to, to march short history and looking ahead to the Rangers over the weekend. Yes, but first, for those who don't know me, I am Jeff Ellis, the host of Lockdown Guardians, have been since the beginning of the Lockdown MLB Network five years of this now. So you've seen a lot, heard a lot, experienced a lot. Before that, I was a draft and prospect analyst slash expert, I guess one could say at, uh, why am I blanking at uh, 24 seven scout? And, uh, before that I was your second favorite blogger or journalist at every Cleveland sports blog that has, or will exist. All right. Hold Jeff to tell us what number two is on Monday. Not the answer to number two for what you're, you're pointing out here. I'm Justin Latta. You've been dealing with me all week or most of the week solo. Uh, in places like Guardians Baseball Inside, the News Herald, the Morning Journal, Prospects Live, places you may have read me, maybe you didn't, maybe you should, maybe you don't want to. I understand. Jeff, I think if you had told me, anybody anybody had told me coming into this Yankee series, hey, the Guardians are going to get 20 walks in this series, I'd have said, wow, they're going to win that series. Because all year we've talked about how the Guardians offense is usually at its best when they walk. They don't do it a lot. They're not a great walking team. They're, you know, probably bottom 10. Sometimes they're middle of the pack, depending on the stretch. 20 walks in two games. They didn't walk one time in two and Wednesday's loss. It was ugly. So it was Thursday's loss. But they walked six times against Garrett Cole. He was not in the strike zone at all. They walked a ton on Tuesday night as well. And they did win Tuesday, really not because of walks, just because of their bullpen outlasting the Yankees. But they just didn't get any big hits. So the question is, like, I guess you can look at it from a glass half full perspective or, or a glass half empty perspective. They didn't do any of this in Milwaukee. They couldn't get a base runner in Milwaukee to save their lives. When they did, it was quickly erased. Is it improvement that they're walking and they the big hit just didn't come? And at some point that's going to happen. I know, you know, they got the big hit Tuesday, quote unquote, which we'll kind of talk about with their offensive struggles as well. But like. Can you can you possibly look at it as encouragement that hey they walked twenty times the last three days combined, um, the big hit will come eventually, or is it just you know offensive ineptitude and 
I'm gonna I'm gonna share an unpopular opinion before the end of the first segment too. It's not one people are gonna want to hear. It's and it either wasn't it even wasn't my quote. I'm gonna share an unpopular quote, but it was true. People don't want it to be true because we often don't like harsh truth, but it's it's true. So I'll share that before the end of the first segment. Yeah, I think when I look at this team, um, I mean to me, maybe the most disappointing thing is like that first game, you sucker punch the Yankees, you decimate their bullpen that should set you up for a good rest of their week. I mean, they used everybody in their pen. They were an absolute mess. And then instead, Cleveland is the team that looks like a mess because they just can't get it going. It's, it was, you know, I, I was on the road today. Did it end up being a one hitter? Did they get another hit? You know, it, it's like, I think it was about the seventh or eighth when I was like, okay, well, we're heading into Ikea now. This game, I don't need to follow. Um, yeah, it's just they can't assemble things um they can't get it together and so they shouldn't go to ikea no they shouldn't go to ikea it was a very good, thank you for catching on the attempted at joke there um <laughs> if you also were laughing please let me know we're trying to have fun with it we know this stinks but here's the other thing like that they still have the second best record in the american league they've had a terrible stretch and people are like oh it's all gonna fall apart we don't know that every team has bad stretches um, offensively, it, it, it is weird. Like the fact that everyone's got a below average bat pip, like some of this is poor contact. You know, I, I don't know what you do with Stephen Kwan right now with his struggles at the top of the lineup. You know, they, they need to score first. Um, and it's not happening for them, but right now, um, unless your name is Jose or John Kenzie, I guess only J names, Josh Naylor. That's it. We've solved J it. J names are good. J names J are good. Only J name lineups. J name lineup. We have figured. We figured it out. So we can John end, uh, Rodriguez is coming back. Coming up. up. Yeah, we Juan can Brito? end. Yeah, Juan Brito. We could end the podcast right now at seven minutes. I I fixed it. You can Rodriguez all thank me later. J name lineup. Uh, all the J names. That's what we need. So before the trade deadline, I, I wanted to get into a little bit. All right, I'll, I'll save. I'll save the unpopular opinion quote real quick, but. Um, just very quickly, a couple notes on the game that I thought were weird, and we'll get into kind of the big picture of the last of the second half since July. We'll get into the big picture picture of things and moves that might need to be made or moves that might be making a move for the sake of making a move and how to balance that. Gavin Williams was cruising through three innings. That's one time for the order. He shut the Yankees down, and he started walking guys, and that got him into trouble, and that's what the Yankees do. They walk a lot. They, they take pitches. They don't chase. They are very good at wearing down starting pitchers, even though the majority of their runs batted in come from Judge and, and Soto. A lot of their production comes from those guys. When other guys get on, they drive them in. Like we sit here and say all the time, RBI is not a skill and it's not a, uh, it's not a uh, predictive stat. Well, those two guys hit whether there's nobody on or there's a ton of guys on. So they're going to crush you either way if you let them. And if you have guys on, they do damage. Um, so you can't walk guys for them. They finally did walk Aaron Judge later in the game for the first time in the series intentionally, and they didn't execute. I will say that that pitch Nick Sandlin threw, I know everyone's going to want to jump all over Sandlin because he hasn't been good in the second half or whatever since that injury occurred. He had a couple of good outings recently. I will say the pitch he threw to, to Giancarlo Stan was not even in the strike zone. He just reached out and muscled out of the ballpark. Because sometimes Giancarlo Stanton does that. That's that's who he's been his entire career. Um, you know, I, I know no one's going to want to ever. It feels good to blame somebody. There's a lot of blame to go around right now, honestly. So you want to sit there and say I'm making excuses for Nick Salen? That's fine. That's fine. I don't care. But sometimes those things happen. It wasn't a strike. Stanton reached out of the strike zone and he hit it for a home run. It, Giancarlo Stanton. That's unfortunately going to happen. Um, it is what it is there, but you know, you walk judge and you still got beat. Unfortunately, you got to execute. Maybe, maybe Nick Salem, even though it wasn't a strike, should have kept the ball down more. Maybe should have missed off the plate more. I don't know if Stanton chases that much. Again, the Yankees don't chase much as a team. Very strange there. The other thing I'll say about two more pitching things, the home run that Aaron judge hit to give the Yankees a one, nothing lead was a change up. Gavin Williams, I don't understand why you're getting beat by Aaron Judge with your worst pitch. Someone someone needs to ask. That's the one thing. Bo Naylor has grown a ton this year defensively. Throwing is still a bit suspect at times. Um, but blocking has been proved throughout the year. Framing has been fantastic. Game calling is probably something he 
you know, could need, could, needs more, more work at. I don't understand why Aaron Judge, why Gavin Williams' his fourth best pitch, a changeup, a right and right changeup at that is the call there. I don't understand yeah. that one. Why, why, why would you let the best hitter in baseball beat you with your worst pitch on three two, or whatever it was? Yeah, it was. I forgot what the count was, but I'm pretty sure it was three two. I don't. That's a I, he, good question. Why? Yeah. Why is that the call? I don't know if anybody asked after the game. Not that it matters, but like, I don't know why that's the call. Um, you know, he, he did that a couple of times too. He threw he threw a couple three two, uh, a two two and a three two changeup. I think to Ben Rice or something. And he walked him, and then that run ended up scoring. I think that was before the stand, or that was before the stand home run, or one of the other home runs. I don't know. It's like why, or maybe he walked him. He scored a sack fly, but like why is Gavin Williams? Why are they calling his worst pitch on three two and two two and against the best hitter in baseball? That I don't get. Um, that's something that should be asked a lot. And then the other thing is Nick Sandlin there in the fifth inning. I don't understand the call to Sandlin there. That is typically a spot you've brought Cade Smith in a ton. He gets ground balls. He strikes guys out. Um, you, might, you might want to say that Stanton is better against fastballs and you were looking for a ground ball. That's fine. I understand that. But Kate Smith, is, that's another case of getting beat by not going at your best. It was still a one nothing game at that point. You should have brought Kate Smith in. I know it's easy to more, Monday morning quarterback this stuff, but you got let you let Aaron Judge beat you on your worst pitch. And then you didn't, you didn't put your best foot forward with Kate Smith there. If Kate Smith gets beat, he gets beat. You went down, you threw your best out. I don't understand why Kate Smith wasn't wasn't the call there. I just think sometimes there's that degree of trying to conserve. That's my my only guess he, that they you know that he didn't he didn't pitch on Wednesday. He didn't I know, pitch. but you also uh, it was a one nothing th- game. He's three innings away from a new a new high for him. I think there he's is gonna you know, break it at some point. I know, that. but I think they're trying to limit just how much he breaks it by. Um, because you don't want he his didn't pitch Wednesday. I know, you're not but gonna it's be able not to like serve him all the way. You're not. You're gonna have to do some degree of it though, because you, you don't want you know another Trevor Staff and another Sam Henches. Their bullpen arms are breaking left and right from high use, so I think there is a degree of their concern about the overall use. I mean, it's it's their highest the use guys is, outside of Class A. Are, it's all the guys they they've breaking? relied on. They're not breaking Smith and Hunter Gaddis and Class A have been but fantastic the, all the, year long. The the previous three are now look like they might have, you know, the Steffens, the Henches, the guys who might now need specific surgery Henches, who had that role Henches in the past totally year. Henches but is a totally different story. That's not usage I, related. I, just saying the high usage guys outside of Class A who's a freak of nature um in a good way are all having some injuries. How do you issues. think Class A got there because they used him a lot? I, I also think there's just bullpen a, arms. Bullpen arms are going to burn out at some point, no matter what. They have the shortest shelf life of any player in Major League Baseball. They are the offensive linemen of Major League Baseball. Uh, the offensive the linemen are, have the the longest careers, typically, though. Okay, they're the running backs of Major League Baseball. I don't know, whatever. Uh, except for point the great is, ones. Sometimes the great ones last you, longer. Not not anymore. But anyway, they need to win that game. It should have been your best pitcher again. If your best pitcher gets beaten that game, so be it. It is what it is, and and you know he. Didn't I think they're just trying to fine. expand out. Like you can't just have three good guys. I think you know it's maybe it's full hardy, but you but need. You've got to bring in. You've got to bring in your best guys when the game's on the line, and then they didn't. That's as simple as that. That's you got to expand out the pen, though. Anymore. That's there's there's both parts to it. The same way you got to give guys, you know, fine. Average. Let him let him finish the fifth inning. Don't bring him out for the sixth. Get out of the jam. Figure out the sixth inning and the sixth inning. Get out of the jam. Keep it one nothing. They didn't do it, and then they didn't even bot, they didn't even get a chance to use Kate Smith. This is the problem we've gone back to years and years about how you can't save your best reliever for a situation that might not happen. They thankfully they have Class A and Kate Smith. They can do it both ways like they did with Allen and Miller. I think you didn't even you didn't even end up using Kate Smith Wednesday or Thursday because you got beaten so bad. Right, which I think is the, the kind of the point. Too. Like I said, I think you and I have different views where I just think that they were trying to do it very intentionally conserve. I think it was intentional so you conservation. Punted, you punted for the year. two games. You can't punt two games. I don't think they punted them, but I think they, they, they feel like they them. have they to punted. have another reliever who works. You can't go to Cade Smith no. constantly. You can't go to those same guys have, constantly. Again, you you could have got him to get the two outs there and said, okay, we won't bring you out for the six. We'll try to keep your usage down by pitch count. But it's still the warm-up. It's, it's, it's the whole it's process. two days off. He didn't pitch for two days, Jeff. It's not like two days off means his arm isn't still going to reach like um, – approaching 50 percent more of the innings he's had to, you he's got limited got bullets your, he has limited bullets left for the rest of the year 
You got There's your a limited chance amount of on goals. Wednesday. You had a chance to keep it close and win Thursday. They had no chance with the way the it. offense was. Come on. It was like one that, nothing, Jeff. It was they one had one hit. No, no. The offense was so terrible. that You, you, you could didn't not know predict it. how the rest of the game was going to go. Watching that you game, you could tell. That was one of those games, no. like when you and I were talking no. in the Milwaukee game, we're like, no. they're going to get no hit. Like that was, you knew where that was going. They couldn't, you could they couldn't buy anything. You were going to lose a one nothing game. You could not. And if they think that in the dugout, they're screwed. If they think that, the season's over. If you think that, we're down one nothing. The game's over. If, I that just, is, if that kind of thinking is going on in the dugout, the season is over. And I guarantee you, they're not thinking that. I no, I know they're not. We're, we're but getting I, too upset about one reliever call here. Let's move. I on. just think you gotta uh, you gotta expand. You gotta you gotta expand beyond the big three. He didn't pitch for two days. You didn't use your best reliever in the biggest situation in a game you still had within reach, within within measurable reach. You can't tell me that they, you knew they're going to lose a one nothing game in the fifth inning. Nobody knows that. The team couldn't even know that themselves. And again, if they think it, they're more screwed than with anybody thinks. All right. We'll talk more about the offense in the second segment. We'll talk about hitters that are still struggling at the deadline, including Lane Thomas. I'm going to get into that unpopular opinion about the offense. We'll talk about some moves and we'll talk about Jose Ramirez moving towards history. In my cup right here is liquid IV. I have right here. The liquid IV, because I've loved it since I've gotten it. Uh, I know I should pull open the ad and read it, but I'm just going to be honest with you here. I have really enjoyed liquid IV. This bomb pop flavor tastes just like the white section of the bomb pop. And I'm loving every minute of it. Um, I specifically got out my liquid IV the other day because we have a local pizza chain that I love, but is incredibly salty. You just feel dehydrated. Sometimes it gives you some stomach problems because of it. Liquid IV. I went to it to help give myself a little bit more hydration when I knew I was going to be overly salted it, on top of, you know, having that bonus effect, it just, it tastes good. It's been great. I'm going to use my bag entirely too quickly. I love everything about it. I really recommend I've got the watermelon that's solid, but I think this, the, the one that's their, their bomb pop is the way to go. The popsicle firecracker is what they're calling it. It's great. I've, if, if I order again, I'm grabbing that one. Uh, it is amazing. Head over to liquid IV because I mean, it's awesome. Tear poor, live more. One stick plus 16 ounces of water hydrates better than water alone. Powered by uh, LIV hydroscience, an optimized ratio of electrodes, essential items, and clinical tested nutrients that turn ordinary water into extraordinary. No more thirsty summers when you include hydration with Liquid IV. Get 20% off your first order of Liquid IV when you go to liquidiv.com and use the code MLB at checkout. It's 20% off your first order when you shop better hydration today using code MLB at IV. Dot com. Get supplies from the site that's made for skilled traders. Supplyhouse.com. Supplyhouse.com is a reliable way to order plumbing, HVAC, and electrical products online. They're easy to use. Website is packed with helpful resources and the latest product info to help you get the job done right. Shop a complete inventory of over 200,000 parts from over four and top brands. Get your order delivered right to your door, no matter where you are. Fast shipping coast to coast. Need help with an online order? Get expert support and industry leading service from the friendliest folks in the business. And talk to a real person every time. Pros and skill trades can get a competitive edge by joining SupplyHouse.com's free Trade Master program. Every Trade Master gets access to a dedicated phone line, free shipping, and discounts on every order. Join the thousands of trade pros already benefiting from their free membership at SupplyHouse.com slash TM. Order supplies. Order plumbing, HVAC, and electrical supplies from anywhere with a few clicks at SupplyHouse.com. For all the pennant race action, check out Locked On MLB with our pal Sully, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day after you're finished listening to today's Locked On Guardians. Thanks for being with us today. So, Chris Antonetti said before the deadline, no matter who this team trades for, whatever moves they make, it was going to have to be the guys that were already here that were going to have to lead them to the promised land, wherever that promised land is, whether that's division title, wherever, wherever they're going to go, it's going to be on the backs of the guys that have been here the whole time. And he was right because right now the guys that are struggling are the guys that were here. Like Lane Thomas is struggling. Sure. He is easily one of the worst hitters on the team. We'll talk about that in a second, but like right now, you know, David Fry has been, Average. I know we keep saying, you know, got to put him on the IL or do this or do that. David Fry has not been their worst hitter. It's been, you know, Josh Naylor is below league average. Um, Stephen Kwan is at a 79 WRC plus in the second half. Bo Naylor is at a 71. 
We expected so much out of him this year. Will Brennan had a huge game in Milwaukee last weekend and then didn't, I mean, nobody did in the Yankees series, let's be honest, but um, he had a, he had a walk against Garrett Cole that I got excited about. And I was like, Oh, that's great progress, but it meant nothing. Um, he's at a 52 WRC plus in the second half. Tyler Freeman, 48, Daniel Sheeman, 47 playing way too much. Um, and then Lane Thomas, 14, like Lane Thomas is one guy out of nine or 10, 11 guys that are playing. And, you know, seven or eight of them are struggling right now. They're all struggling. You know, again, Noel and, and Ramirez and Ramirez has been, you know, pretty putrid since um, the Milwaukee series, this, this road trip in general. So it is the guys that brought you here that have to get it going. This offense is not going to do anything. It's not going to go anywhere without Stephen Kwan, without Jose Ramirez, without Josh Naylor. I know, you know, you're talking about how you want to expand the pen and rely on more guys. We know what Nick Sandlin can and can't do. We know what those big three can do, but you can't expect them to drive in. The, they're not judging Stanton. You know, those three guys are not judging Stanton. They're judging Soto, I should say. And Jose Stanton. is. Like, Jose is, is if he's not he, in that he tier, is. is a step away. Like, I mean, yeah. Jose, to me, is in that tier. But the thing that beat the guard, you know, I don't know those two guys beat beat the Guardian. Himself, and Stanton isn't Stanton anymore. Let's, let's, no, it's just, I, it's I meant those two guys. I meant, yeah, I, yeah, I meant Soto. I didn't mean Stanton, but. You know, they they got beat by those two guys in this series. That's not happening right now for for Naylor and, and Jose. And and there's Jose. Nobody, nobody, if, if Judge if Jose is in the atmosphere of Aaron Judge, there's nobody on this team that's in the atmosphere of, of either him or Soto. No. Um, so you don't really have a second guy, but they need those big three to be their big three, and they need one or two guys to step up every night behind one of those big three. And right now it's not happening. So, you know, I know no one wants to hear it, but Chris Anthony was right. The guys that are here that, that were good all season that have track records. Jose's got a track record. Josh Naylor has a track record. Stephen Kwan. I know there's been some ups and downs with those guys, but they are guys that have had major league success and you kind of have an idea of what they can do. And if they don't do that, nothing's going to get done with this team offensively. Yeah. It's, you know, and I think one of the things too, that's like the biggest disappointment for me is like, is again, Bo Naylor. Like we thought he was maybe the third most important hitter on this team at the start of the year. And now offensively for as much as we backed on Rokio and Rokio is having a good month. Fairness to the comments. Um, uh, should say Ahmad Rosario, uh, reds below there, by the way, I was, you know, he didn't get very far. I know people. Well, he hasn't played for the reds. Yeah. That's the thing. He hasn't played, but, um, but to get back to it, it's like Brian Rokio is offensively outperforming Bo Naylor now. Like that's how bad it's been. I'm hoping it's a sophomore slump, but yeah, is yowza. That's, I mean, it's, it's, it is, you said it's across the board. Everyone's got a terrible bat pip. Everyone's below what you like. What is it? David Fry's got like a 140 bat pip. It's like crazy how low it is. It's like, yes, that can be bad luck. There's also sometimes just bad contact. Yeah, bad contact, and yeah, and that's that's going to happen when you have a an elbow injury you're nursing, and nobody knows. I, I don't know. Is is David Fry going to have Tommy John surgery at the end of the year? Like, I I didn't even look it up, but I can't remember the last thing I played catcher. He's played first. He hasn't played the outfield in a long time. Like, clearly something's not good with the elbow there. It might be enough where he might have to have Tommy John. I don't know, because um, guys can hit through it. Like you know, Shohei Otani is recovering from Tommy John, and he's rehabbing his arm, but he's able to hit. So I don't know. Uh, I'll quickly mention some of the trade deadlines after the break and I'll get into, um, we'll talk about guys. We've, have we learned enough about certain guys and then is it time to make a change? We'll talk about some of those guys and who could be there and making a change and, and why making a change is complicated. If everybody wants to make one, we'll talk about why it's complicated as well. Guys, you know, if you're like me, uh, getting in a workout can be somewhat challenging. Uh, There's a lot going on throughout the day, right? You've got work. I host, we host this podcast together after, after both of us get off our jobs, there's family, there's, there's wives, all that kind of stuff. That is why you need Tonal. When life gets busy, fitting in a workout is much easier with Tonal because they have efficient workouts personalized for you and are available with the amount of time you have. And everything we buy today is a smart thing. Smart watch, smartphone. Why not buy a smart personal trainer in your home? Cheaper than a personal trainer Easier to, easier to have at your convenience than a personal trainer. They'll optimize your workout for you every time with a personalized program and workout suggestions based on your goals. The weight will adapt to your training techniques. So whether you're like us and you're working 
multiple jobs and have a family, or maybe you're a professional athlete, you just want to up your game. Tonal is trusted by thousands who have become their strongest. Right now, Tonal is offering their listeners $200 off your Tonal purchase with a promo code LOCKDOWNMLB. That's Tonal.com. Use our promo code LOCKDOWNMLB for $200. That's a lot off your first purchase. Tonal.com. Promo code LOCKDOWNMLB. Get $200 off your order. Guardians come home against the Rangers over the weekend. Some home cooking. Check out the home broadcast on your SiriusXM app. Just search Guardians to find that. Uh, very quickly, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on it because that first segment really dra- dragged on. Um, players who were traded the deadline. So we talked. I talked the other day about trading guys at the deadline is hard, and it's hard for players to adjust. This happens every year. Jeff, you're, you know you can't see all the stats in front of you, right? Because they're scrolling across the screen. Yeah. Who do you, who do you think the best hitter at the deadline has been that got traded? Just who do you think? Uh, wait, I think you told me this and I think I already forgot because it's been a busy few days. Uh, let's see. It's, it's, uh, it's obviously Lane Thomas, right? You're muted. <laughs> I unmuted and I remuted. Uh, unfortunately, Lane Thomas is the worst hitter traded the deadline. He has got a 14 WRC plus it's a 25 WRC plus against lefties. The one thing he was Doing, yeah. was doing well, was hitting against lefties. He's not doing that. No. Um, Brian De La Cruz, who got traded to the Pirates, is in an 18. That's the closest you're going to get. No, the best two hitters at the deadline, one was Jorge Soler, who yeah. the Giants dumped his contract in Atlanta because they were looking for any offense um, in Atlanta with, with Ronald Acuna out for the season, and they were trying to recreate 2021. Um, Jazz Chisholm had seven home runs in 14 games for the Yankees. He got hurt, but he's coming back on Friday. Dylan Carlson. Everybody, yeah, Dylan Carlson. Every, that's right. Everybody would have split their pants if the Guardians trade for Dylan Carlson. I saw so many tweets. People, see, people, someone reported the Guardians were interested in Dylan Carlson. People were so were so mad. Dylan Carlson has three home runs and a 144 WRC plus. Even better, Jeff. Dylan Carlson has two homers and a 142 WRC plus versus right-handed pitching. The thing the Guardians need help against. Mark Canha, no power, but he's got a 122 WRC plus. Jess Winker, not been good, but he's got 100 WRC plus since the deadline. Just no power. He had his first home run the other day. It was a walk-off home run that he really celebrated. Eloy Jimenez has been okay for the Orioles. Um, Randy Rosarena, one home run for the, the Mariners, who just fired their manager and, and most of their coaching staff, honestly. 122 WRC plus despite no power. Uh, yeah, Brian De La Cruz has been horrible. You know, there's a guy. There are guys that got traded that are doing good. There are guys that got traded that are doing bad, and it's early. I don't know. I I start to think like they have to play Lane Thomas the rest of the year. They don't have a choice at this point. Yeah, but I, I almost kind of wonder like if it doesn't get better, he might get non tender in the off season. That trade might end up going. Bad. I don't think they're going to non tender him. Like you don't trade that much to non tender a guy. You maybe feel like there's things it's you bad. can work on. It's bad. It's, I mean, I'm not trying to say it's good. Uh, it's it's been awful. I think the most annoying one to me is Eloy Jimenez, just because that was the straight like. The full Isaac Reddy's has a 49 WRC plus. He's yeah. been horrible. He, but, he he talked the other day. I saw a quote from him saying he just feels like he's lost, and it's like. When you admit that publicly, you know it's bad. It's like we I talked about how I thought IKF would be a slam dunk. You can see that he has a not like that's the thing. No. Like most guys trade at the deadline tend to not be good, especially guys who've never really been traded before. And yeah, Horace Solaire, that's nothing new for him. Yeah, it's like he's used to that. I think and I mean like Thomas was traded before he was traded when he was like a minor leaguer, essentially. Like he had not yeah. done anything. Like a cup so of coffee in the major yeah. Yeah. You know, Jazz Chisholm was, I, you know, I think he might be a guy. This is really the first time because really when he went for Gallon, he was still a minor leaguer. So yeah, credit to a him, prospect, a prospect, you know, yeah. it, it's, um, you know, that situation. Market, but, yeah. but most guys and, you know, the, the problem is he's been hurt again. Like he's going to be activated soon, but he hasn't played. And then Rosario, it's like I had people bring him up. It's like I knew he was never going to get to Cleveland in that waiver order. There's just no way he was going to get there. He hasn't even played since, for the Reds since he got there. Yeah, I mean, he got activated this week. I think he was hurt. So yeah. it's, it's, you know, it, listen, right now, <laughs> Thomas deal is terrible. Like there's no way around it. Um, there is something they like there and hopefully they will be right. Um, I, I would really prefer, you know, him to be who we thought he would be so far. It has been a rough transition. We'll have to kind of wait and see on him, but right now it's also like, 
God, is it something in the water? Are we sure it's Lane Thomas and not whatever is happening with this whole team right now? Like, did he just catch the I can't hit influenza when he stepped in the locker room? Because, I mean, offensively, it's I mean, the, that's a that's a bigger problem. I mean, it's it's the whole team like they, you know, I can go like I'm pretty sure they still have the lowest weighted runs created plus in baseball since July 1st. Like this is the worst offense in baseball for the last two months. And is it the players is, it, you know, there's a degree of bad luck with the low bat pit, but there's also some degree of the players not adjusting or the coaches not able to, you know, help the player. I don't know. Or maybe it's a sports psychologist. Maybe it's what you said at the start. Maybe they need, you know, someone to get in there and talk to them. Yeah. I mean, everybody was enamored with the guardians in 2022 and, you know, the blue troop and, and, the, the Guardiac kids, all that stuff. And it's mostly the same roster from that year for the most part. And in theory, you've added better pieces since that year. You know, Bo Naylor is now a full-time regular. John Kenson, well, he really isn't part of the problem right now for as much. People need to listen to us and, and really understand what they're hearing when we say words. We have long-term concerns about Noel's profile, but he absolutely needs to be playing every day right now because it's it's working for right now. And maybe it will continue to work and he'll be a unicorn. That Sometimes it happens. The Guardians love to chase those types. They love trying to find guys that are unicorns and they just never get them. Um, we we both have doubts that it will work over the long period, you know, because Oscar Gonzalez was everybody's favorite um, pop singer of the moment uh, in 2022. And now he's back in AAA. That might happen to Noel, but it's not happening right now. And he has to be in the lineup every day. So no one's sitting here saying bench Noel. That's it's that's a long term thing, but right now he is not the problem. He is not the problem. Listen to me again. He is not the problem. I'm tired of people not list not hearing what they're listening to. What's um, that? He just said. Uh, Justin just um, said that that if you notice, the offense it? all fell apart when John Kenzie got called up. So he's the problem. Yes. This all happened the moment he was called up is when the offense imploded. I think that's what Justin just said. So this is he's he's the problem. It's true. Right? No, no, the offense is imploded with him around it. You're right. He's the only one who's doing anything. And Jose. Um, you know, the offense is supposed to be better now. It was great in the first half. Everyone was like, oh, they they finally said they got to hit the ball harder. We're looking to make more impact. It's okay. Like Stephen Kwan, if he swings and misses sometimes because he's looking to impact the ball. Everybody was overjoyed with those quotes. I don't know. Some, and now I'm getting some, like four tweets a day that he has Kenny Lofton disease. At so, some point, at some point, it's on the players. Like, yeah. you could, you don't fire a whole roster in Major League Baseball or any sport for that matter. But at some point, it's not the cook, it's the ingredients. And guys got to perform. Players, players get coaches and managers fired or head coaches, whatever. You know, voices start to wear off and approaches don't work but at some point it's the ingredients you have to perform and i just said josh naylor has a certain track record stephen kwan though he's young has a certain track record those guys gotta perform um you know bo naylor it, it's you know to, to be determined right coaches can help you make make adjustments they can work on you with stuff but you know you can you go to college to learn things right you go to college to to get a degree but at the end of the day those teachers can't go to your job with you and and then do the job for you you have to apply what you've learned sometimes the lesson doesn't stick and and you know i don't blame my teachers for the fact that i stink at math i'm 35 years old i could have done better sometimes the players just got to come through man i once had a shirt that said um i can explain it to you i can't make you learn um I yes, located that exactly shirt. but uh so i'm not allowed to uh, that, that's one of those that like was kind of like ah, it's not worth the fight which is uh kind of how it feels sometimes with people online like i still i can i just say again like i'm gonna sit here and be like this is still a team with the second best work at the american league mm -hmm. like it's crazy to me that people want to call for for votes head or call for the front office has had or again this trade you know it's like the, this trade deadline um it was not, I don't think it was malfeasance. I just think there wasn't a lot there. You know, the Texas Rangers were buying at the deadline and right now they have the fifth pick in baseball. We need to change either the deadline, you know, with the addition of teams or bring yeah. back the waiver deadline. Like 
it, it yeah. would be a different world. It's like right now is unfortunately set up where too many teams think they're in and the teams that should think they're done like the Rockies just don't fully sell. It's a weird, weird teams so, out there. So George Valera had two home runs on Call up. Wednesday on Thursday night. Yeah. I, I mean, who, who have we learned enough about this season? Like that was kind Will of the whole theme coming in was like, yeah, who have we learned enough about? We've learned I think enough we know who Will Brennan, Brennan is. Like, Unfortunately. Yeah, but I don't like, think he's the guy you send down for Valera. No, I think like we've also learned who Ty Freeman is. Like uh, he's not even he's barely a right. They have too many right handed hitters right now. He's not doing enough defensively. He was OK in center, but it's not like like if he had become like a plus defender in center, it'd be a different story. But he's he's slightly below average in the bat has just no like again that Miles straw like you've been saying, you know, the bat is is what it is where it's like he's not Mejia because he doesn't chase, but it's the same problem I had like with Mejia and Freeman and other guys where when you only have hit tool and you don't really have okay. power and you don't really walk, it's like that is a profile that's very hard to be successful. Con contact doesn't equal hit tool. Yes, you're uh, right. Impact impact, and contact equal hit tool. You have to have both. And I don't think he has both. And when you don't have the patience to walk, you are susceptible to the kind of things that happens to him. And it's, it's something that happens to Quan too. Um, but I think, you know, you can, you can hang on to Sheeman as your backup infielder slash backup outfielder, even though he's had a very weird year. And I think he's also sort of um, kind of, I don't want to say he's reached his peak or whatever, but like, I, I don't know that that profile is something you want to play with every single day. He's been really struggling since that early season success. Um, you know, Jimenez and Naylor aren't going anywhere. Unfortunately, Bo Naylor, I should say, you know, Bo Naylor's giving you not a lot with the bat, but he's not going anywhere. Um, and you can't catch David Fry because he's not healthy, and that's also impacting things. So, like, you're you're kind of limited by what's going on. Like you've been saying, either IL Fry, but I don't know. I don't know if 15 to 20 days is going to heal his issue. Like we don't know what the extent of the injury is. So 15 to 20 days may not mean anything in the grand scheme of things. It may just be time off. There's no guarantee with that. And that, again, I keep going back. That's why Manzardo is not here, simply because you cannot have Naylor Fry and and Manzardo because there's not room. That might happen in September when the rosters expand, maybe. But I mean, Valera could make sense. Um, Freeman's still really chasing a lot down there, but you need a you need a lot. Uh, or I should say Martinez is, is chasing a lot down there. You got to get a look at Valera anyway. He's hitting well right now, ish. You know, we had a good game Thursday, I guess. I shouldn't say that's hitting well right now. It's still just one game. But um, you got to get a look at him anyway. Maybe he brings a spark. Maybe he doesn't. I, I hate the idea of, of just making a move to make a move because then that puts pressure on Valera, right? You call him up and it's like, okay, well, Valera's got to be the guy that fixes the offense. And he comes up and he struggles out the gate because that's, you know, he does have warts in his, in his profile and he can only hit right-handers. Um, then everyone just, you know, gives up there or whatever. So I hate to to sit there and say like, oh, call him up. That's the answer. Cause that's not the answer. It's, you know, you also got to contend with guys you have in the locker room all year too. Like it's a sensitive thing. You, you have to be careful with, you know, e e players have to put ego aside and you got to do what's best for the team, but you got to be careful with the locker room there. And, and, you know, just say, we're going to send all these guys down and bring these guys up because you guys are struggling. It looks knee jerk and it also, you know, it can, it can say, you know, we don't have confidence in you, that kind of thing. It's, it's a very delicate balance is all I'm saying. I'm, I'm not saying they shouldn't bring Valera up. I think you're right. You need it. You need another left-handed hitter. And if it can't be a first baseman, it could be an outfielder. Cause we talked about this off air. You, you play Thomas in, in center against lefties. You keep Noel and right against lefties. You bench Valera against lefties. You DH fry against lefties. Um, and against righties, you keep Noel in right, or you DH him in right, you put Brennan in left center, and you put whoever in center, in right field. I don't know. You figure it out. But Or if, I'm sorry, you have Valera in right field against against left, against right-handers. Like, I, it's one move. I don't know. I don't think they're going to make multiple if they're going to make any because it just looks very knee-jerk and you got to be careful. And you're not going to call up two hitters after, the, after September 1st either. It's going to be one hitter and one pitcher, as it always is. So... I don't know. By the way, real quickly, I know Jeff, I'll let you finish things up. Mm -hmm. Jose Ramirez goes 30 30. He's got 30 home runs, 30 steals in the, or, and on the season. Uh, the first guarding to do that twice in his, in a, two, two, two different seasons in his career. 
first since Grady Sizemore and, and himself. Um, uh, Dan Zimborski at Zips has him finishing with a 69 career uh, war. Nice. Um, that is about the average career war of a Hall of Fame third baseman, according to Baseball Reference and Jaws. So, Jose Ramirez, future resident of Cooperstown, New York. Yeah. So I, fun. At least we at least we have that. I know in OOTP leagues, I vote anyone over 60 has an automatic vote for me. That's just such an accomplishment. That means 10 years of being a star level player. So, uh, yeah, here's the thing. We are so long, but final note, they got to take care of business. This is the stretch where the Rangers are in town. We talked about how bad they are. Casey, when they have not, they're, the they're playing better of late, but there is, you know, it's still a team that is mostly beat up on, on lower teams. Uh, we got a lot of things that we will have for the next show. We want to thank you all for joining us, though, today. We realize it is not a fun time to be a Guardians fan when the offense isn't there, when there is struggles. Thank you for joining us, for being in every day. We really appreciate all of you. Thank you. And go, go, Guardians, go.